weeks. It's Wednesday, January 18th, 2023. Coming up on the program today, don't let a drunk guy try to fix your iPhone. Plus, confronting your prostitute whore of a wife. Thanks to Christians, we might just get a penis festival. And the cursed pussy juice of a black woman. All this was your voicemails today. Distorted View Daily proudly presents great moments in video game tournaments. Are you crying? What's your, yes. what's your, what's your name? My name is Brian. Okay. Oh, your name is Brian? Yeah. And why are you crying? Because I just lost $90. 90 You cry because you lost money? Yes. Oh, why would you want to match Noel Brown? Because I wanted to play good players. Did you, did you think you was good? No, I huh? just wanted to play. So you knew you were ass? Yes, and I'm you, very ass. I live in Columbus. But you, but you, but you lost. I live in Columbus. What, what? Everyone in Columbus is free. So you live with, so you live with bum-ass Andre? What? You live in this area with my, my man's Andre. I wanted to play him, but he was busy. Stop crying, man. That's not that's not real nigga shit. I'm not a real nigga. <laughs> That's not that's not real niggas. I know. I just wanted I wanted the money match people so I could get them to take it seriously because money was on the line and because it's hype as fuck. Well you know what? Real men don't cry. But it's cool. You must stop crying, nigga. Stop crying. Stop crying, nigga. Stop crying, man. Stop crying. Hey, everybody lose money, it's the way of the world. You got your ass beat, you got fucked. That's fine, that's why I have a job. You got fucked. It's the Distorted View Show with Tim Hansen. L-O-L. Laugh it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Full bloom AIDS. Excuse me. Disturbing video. She is a fat cunt. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Tim Hansen back here with you for the Wednesday episode of DV. Got a great one today, although I am exhausted. I've been dealing with car bullshit. You know, my lease is almost up and I've been trying to figure out what to do. What car should I be rolling around in next? You know, to get them bitches. Got to be something pretty fly. My whip has got to be fire. You know, got to get that honey. You know what I'm saying, fellow kids? I live in Cincinnati. And so, there, you know, there's tons of uh, car dealerships around. It's a large city. But plus, you know, we're, we're close to uh, Kentucky. There's just a lot of options, right? So... I went to this place and uh, I, you know, I talked to a salesperson and I was like, look, uh, you know, I've got a few months left on my lease. I don't know when I, I should really start looking for a new car because I've heard the car market is crazy. You know, these dealerships can't keep cars on the lot. And the guy was like, oh, you need to start looking now. The sooner, the better. You might be placed on waiting lists. It's going to be a whole fucking thing. And then I was like, well, I, uh, I noticed you have a car sitting on the lot here that I'm interested in. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah we got that. I'm like, well, someone has obviously claimed this one already, right? No, 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 it's available. And, and, you know, so I said, okay, so much for a waiting list. I'm already questioning his sincerity, right? He's like a total car salesman at this point, just lying to me. And I was like, you know, because I lease my cars, right? And so I don't really care what the cost of the car is. I'm only interested in what my monthly payment is. That, that's the only thing that I'm concerned with. How much do I have to pay every month? So I'm like, uh, look, here's my my current monthly payment is, you know, whatever it is, $300 or $400 a month. I want to keep it in that same range. Now, my car payment for my current car is a little more than it should be because I was I, I traded in my previous car way early and they rolled in some of those outstanding payments into the new lease, if that makes sense. And if it doesn't, that's OK. I don't really understand it either. Anyway, so the car I ended up with or I, I wanted is the same fucking car that I have now, except it's a newer model, the Kia Seltos. It's a it's a little higher trim. It cost a little bit more money, but I figured it would, you know, it would still be in the same general price range. And I was like, well, this is what I'm willing to spend. And, and the car dealer guy was like, uh, oh yeah, that, that sounds doable. Let's make this happen. This motherfucker, boy, he, he jerked us around for mm, about four hours. Everything was a huge fucking production, including trading in my car, my turning in my lease. He was like, well, I don't, you got some scratches. You got some damage on that car. I see a, a stain on the seat. We might just do you a favor, though, and uh, buy your car out. Or, you know, whatever. You're not going to get any money for it. We'll just consider it a wash. And usually when you turn in a lease, that's how it works. You just you turn in the lease. It's not like you get any money for it. You don't own the car. 
But we're in such a weird fucking car market right now. Technically, my Kia is worth more than what I owe on it. Like if I were to buy out the lease, I would end up ahead by like a couple thousand dollars. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. When this guy presented me with my monthly payments, I laughed in his face. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Oh, oh, oh you misunderstood. I don't want to lease a fucking Bugatti. I'm leasing one of the cheapest fucking SUVs that is sold in America, right? The, the Kia Seltos. It was $150 more a month than what I was paying now. And his reasoning is, look, it's a different market now, buddy. This is the new normal. You fucked. We're going to rape you. Look, we That's the whole thing. Now, demand is high and we can legally butt fuck you. It is insane. You go on these car websites, right? And and you can sort of get an estimate of your payment, right? Right on the website, it tells you how much the car is and it figures out your monthly payment. It is never accurate, right? You go to the car dealership. It's immediately $200 more every month, right? There was another car I was looking at. A f another fucking Kia. Kia. P pieces of shit Kia. The Kia Nero. Those payments were almost $700 a month. You could like lease a Tesla for less than that. Why are these people smoking? Now, guys, I don't have the best credit in the world. I understand that. I'm not going to get the best percentage rates when it comes to loans, APRs, whatever. But something was totally cuckoo crazy bananas. Obviously, I stepped away from that deal quote unquote deal later in the day lord douche was you know looking online and he was like oh uh there's a kia at in a dealership here in cincinnati we should take a look at it and see just see what the cost would be well we get to the dealership and that car hasn't come yet it's it's on its way we walk in five minutes later there's a deal on the table for just a little more than i'm paying now it is insane how wildly different the prices can swing from dealer to dealer and if you look on again if you look online you look at the prices and you say oh it's like a thousand dollar difference between this dealership and the other but then you go in i i honestly don't know where any of them are coming up with their numbers it is impossible for me to figure out that's why i, I like i said i i just care about what whatever it is my monthly payment is going to be that's all i care about now i will tell you this and I have to speak in a hushed tone here. You remember not so long ago, I told you a tale of the Buttercrock or B Butterbell. Remember how I'd have to return Butterbells because they weren't good enough? And this stretched on for days, weeks, months. I fear this car thing is going to be a similar situation because after all was said and done, now keep in mind, I, I have put down a thousand dollars. It is a refundable deposit. Even if I don't buy the car, this is just just to put my name down, kind of holds the car. And then when I go in, you know, he says I can do whatever I want with a thousand dollars. They'll give it back to me. I can put it towards the car, whatever. It's the only reason I coughed up a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars I don't have, by the way. <laughs> anyway, Lord Douche heard that and began looking online. I'm going to disable internet in this house. Because he was like, you know, at another dealership, for just like a couple hundreds more, you can get the next trim level up, which is like leather seats, all LED lights, other things that I guess people care about and cost money. I don't think we should go through the, with this. I think we should go look at the uh, at another dealer and see if they would be willing to give you as much. Oh, that's the other thing. At this uh, dealership where I, I am I currently have a deal with, uh, they're like, oh, yeah, we'll give you uh, what well, you can trade in your car and we'll give you like two thousand some odd dollars towards this lease because you've got so much equity. Is that the residual value? I don't, whatever one of those words means, that's what my car has. And then that, of course, brought the, the monthly price down. And so Lord Deuce was like, hey, let's see if we can get that same deal at another dealership that has the higher trim for just a little more money. And thus has started a new saga. It's Butterbell 2.0. I guarantee you, when it's all said and done, I will have either made a deal, walked away from a deal, or have multiple deals with every Kia dealership in the tri-state area. I'm so glad I'm starting this whole process in January. It gives me some time. Unfortunately, that means it also gives Lord Douche time. Someone shoot me in the head right now. Well, there you go. That's what I've been up to lately, freaks. 
I hope uh, you've had a less stressful week thus far. I do have a bunch of audio I want to share with you before we get into the news today. Unfortunately for the woman featured in this first clip, kind of sounds like she's having a stressful week too. And it's sad because at first she was probably excited. She walked into a T-Mobile store and was like, you know what? Today I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to get me an Apple Watch. It's going to be cellularly connected. I can, <laughs> I don't know if cellularly is a word. Uh, I can make uh, calls on my watch. It'll be so cool. Now, as the T-Mobile representative was getting her new watch ready, setting it all up, he accidentally totally ruins her phone. He ju- he deletes everything. I don't know why or how that is even possible. I have set up multiple Apple Watches. You typically don't have to dick around with your phone too much. I think part of the problem is it is vibrantly clear that the T-Mobile representative here is drunk on the job. He just sounds a little tipsy. Take a listen. Do you have a, a supervisor or some kind of a manager phone number for here? Uh, it would be you can I know, but he you. has to have a boss. Of course I do, but but he won't. He'll he'll contact you and tell me what I told you. What did you tell me? I'm sorry. Besides Whatever erasing you my stuff. Whatever boss is gone. Okay, can I ask why you erased my phone? I did not lose your phone. I have no idea. I didn't ask you to lose my phone. I asked you, why did you erase my phone? So whatever is gone is gone. I'm sorry. You see what I mean? He's got that way of talking that that drunk... Man, man, look, here's the thing. What's gone is gone. It's done. Let's... Let's not even let's not even dwell on the past at this point. Your phone is fucked. That's just the facts. You know, he's, he's like not answering the right questions. Like, why? I, I want to know why. Why did you think you needed to erase my phone? Are you saying? Are you saying that I lost your phone? No, 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 no. I have your phone right here. It's like, no, that's not the question. You're not listening. Okay, but why did you erase my phone? What was the reason for erasing my phone? Can I ask? I, I personally have not. Someone erased her phone. I don't understand what you're saying to me. I don't think he does either. That's fine. And I don't think you understand what you're saying. <laughs> no, I understand that whatever could not have been, you, you know. You uh, I don't know if you can understand that. She turned to someone and said, are you filming this? No, no, no. Don't talk to me. Whatever has been you know, replace to your phone. Uh, you were supposed to hook up my watch. That's what you were supposed to do. You were supposed to hook up my watch. And that's what you were in the middle of doing, hooking up my watch. I mean, this woman obviously knows nothing about technology either. I need you to hook up my watch to my phone. But that's okay. Uh, a lot of us are idiots when it comes to technology. That's why she's going to the T-Mobile store to buy it and have someone hook it up for her. And then but you I, selected I, to I restore my phone. Like, I don't understand what you're doing. Restore your watch to your phone. That's not even a thing. Restoring your watch to your phone. Again, I think they're talking about pairing here. I know with, like, some of the older watches, one annoying thing about, like, the early Apple Watch, like the Apple II, Apple III watch, it had so little built-in memory. It you Like, you couldn't install updates to the watch os without completely wiping the watch and erasing it completely it didn't have enough memory to uh, hold the 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 os that's installed and the new os if that makes any sense so you had to like just erase it completely and install the update at the same time i'm so glad apple figured that out so they told me to bring my watch in and something with the iem number so you guys can hit connect my network my data plan to my new device sure and what did my phone have to do? You erase my phone. I did not erase your phone. You just clearly erased my phone. No, I did not erase Here, your phone. Here, you want to see? This goes back and forth for a while until we get this new response. Uh, we did not erase your phone. Okay, then what did you do to my phone? I have no idea. Ma'am, I have no idea what I did to your phone. I was pressing all sorts of buttons. I was just fucking batting it around like a monkey. I don't remember, but... You don't remember. This should provide the lady here with a valuable lesson about performing backups on her phone. If you're taking it somewhere for repairs, yeah, back that shit up beforehand. What do we do to your phone? You erased my phone. 
were we trying to respect or what were we doing? Trying to respect, what does that mean? What were we doing to your phone? You were nothing. You were supposed to be hooking up my new watch. But it's somehow your phone got erased. Not somehow. You selected to re- erase all of it to factory reset it. At this point, the woman should realize there's just there's going to be no satisfactory resolution today. What's even crazier is he's not the only employee at the store. Why doesn't someone else intervene? This guy shouldn't be talking to anyone. He should be lying down, taking some aspirin. You know, a hell of a hangover is coming up. Because this is clearly not okay. Yeah, you messed up. So I messed up. Yep. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, I don't think I'd be able to control myself. I would just punch him in the throat. He's drunk. He's already wobbly. He'd be going down pretty quick. How the fuck did she mess up? Aside from thinking that T-Mobile could handle a simple Apple Watch installation. That is where you went wrong. All right, let's move on. You know, I always question the validity of these TikTok videos where a guy catches his cheating wife. There's like a 75% chance that it's staged, you know, for the likes, for the hearts, for the follows. I want to believe this one is real, though. As I play it, I will try to sniff out the bullshit if there is any. Uh, Basically, a husband has found out that his wife has a secret OnlyFans account. And lo and behold, this model cam girl is also up for a little prostitution. Either that or she's just, you know, up to fuck around with random dudes. So this guy, the husband, pretends to be a random dude and sets up a date with her. Let's see how this goes. To the Comfort Inn Hotel. I'm not going to split hairs here, but just know he's he's playing fast and loose with the word hotel. I don't know if I ever told you guys this, but uh, I worked for one day at a Comfort Inn in Ashtabula. It was, and it was was when I was doing this show. This had to have been back in like 2008, maybe. I was living in Ashtabula again. It was uh, shortly after I started uh, the sideshow. When I moved back to Ashtabula to start the sideshow, I moved in with my parents for a few months just to see if this was going to work out. And then I got an apartment. Joey, my good friend, uh, was living in the area as well. And he was the manager of a Comfort Inn. He needed people to work at the hotel. He he needed to hire some people. And he thought it would be fun if I worked a few days a week with him. And of course, I could always use the extra cash. I was like, okay. So on my first day on the job, my first and only day on the job, the owner of the Comfort Inn began to train us on like the computer systems, how to check guests in, how to, uh, you know, get the key cards ready, all that crap. I took one look at the degenerates staying at this motel. I refuse to call it a hotel. I thought to myself, I I just started doing this podcast as a living. I'm finally doing what I love. I'm making it happen. I'm a I'm a working girl. And now I'm taking a shitty part-time job at a hotel where I will be shot and killed at some point. This is how I will meet my end. I don't I don't want that to happen. So I'm like I'm out. I'm sorry, Joey. <laughs> You're going to have to find someone else. When it comes to slummy motels, hotels, you've got different levels of clientele. Like sometimes it's uh, like runaway teenagers and young drug addicts. This uh, Comfort Inn, I think, was marketed towards the uh, middle age crack addict. And I think those are uh, far more dangerous people. Sure enough, not too long after I uh, said sayonara to my front desk hotel career, I called Joey up one day and I was like, hey, hey, girl, you want to go get some lunch? And he's like, I can't. I'm dealing with the police. Someone just OD'd, <laughs> OD'd in the hotel, stripped off all of his clothes, ran through the halls and collapsed. And then he was like, this is the second time in a week it's happened. That's that's the type of hotel comfort in is. That being said, if you're looking for a place to hook up with a dude, you can't beat those rates. Oh, Comfort Inn has some amazing prices. I didn't know. I had no clue. I didn't know. I had no clue that this is what she was doing. But she about to find out today. The reason I found out is because my homie, he be on OnlyFans. And he runs across my wife's page and he tells me that my wife has OnlyFans. So I'm like, what? Wow. So every day she's coming home. She's acting right She doesn't know that I even know this shit. I'm going to fast forward the part where he walks through the hotel because that's kind of boring. But uh, that make no sense. he's knocking on her door now. 
Exactly. Uh -uh. Open the uh -uh. No. Court. Open the door. No. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. What are you doing? Open here? I know what am I doing? What, what are you, you doing? doing? I said, what are you doing? What are you doing? You doing meetups? No. Uh -huh. You doing me? I'm not. You doing meetups? No, I'm not. What you you what you talking about? I'm not stupid. I'm not. No, I'm not stupid. I'm D Rock. You want to meet up? I'm D Rock. Don't stop. Stop playing. I'm D Rock. You know? Yeah. You know now. You didn't know. You. That's who. That's I'm D Rock. The one you been DMing on. Only fans for the past week. Look at this shit, man. I'm sitting at the house. I'm not sure if she's crying because she's been caught or if she realizes she's not going to get paid for this little sexual endeavor. Oh, uh, yeah, but you know now. You didn't know. You, uh, that's who that's. I'm, she's certainly dressed like she's going to get fucked. She's got like this one piece thing going on. It covers her tits, and there's, you know, like a piece of floss up her ass. And the one piece is all like uh, like a money pattern. Now, you didn't know. You, that's who that's. I'll be like the one you've been DMing on oh, only fans for the past week. Look at this shit, man. I'm sitting at the house for the day while she's talking about, oh, I'm business meetings or I'm hanging with my friends. You do a meet us. There's nothing to explain. There's nothing to explain. You are the. Man, I don't give a about no more. Hey, listen, I'm not trying She's to trying to say something about the mortgage. Well, the mortgage is due. Some, somehow it's got to get paid. No, you be coming home every day, laying with me and doing all that shit the whole time. You doing meetups and shit. Okay, no, ain't none of that. You doing meetups. This is this is what I did not want to marry. This is not what I want. I didn't marry. This is not what I married. We've been married four years. We've been married four years. It ain't no, it's no dancing. Ain't no such thing. Dancing. Get a hotel room for a little private dancing. No, don't try to cover yourself up. Don't try to cover you. Cover, what, why are you embarrassed? Now you wasn't embarrassed at first. You weren't embarrassed when you was on there. I don't. I don't give. Now she want to cry. This might be real. I mean, she really is crying. She's convulsing. Is what she's doing. I don't love you. Back away from me. Like, back away from me. Back away from me. Back away from me. I ain't no dear shit. Finish doing what and you want to sit there. Finish doing what you was doing. Finish doing what you was doing. About what you thought about. You call the next thing, but come get your shit. Your shit will be outside when you come home. Your shit will. Don't. Don't. I don't. Hey, that's a good point. I'd use that in court to get out of paying child support, you know? I love playing audio of marriages falling apart. I think that says a lot about me. I'm a sucker for people in distress. I'm a sucker for other people's pain. Well, that too. All right, I have just a couple other short clips I wanted to play. One thing about me is I hate being late for stuff. I don't like uh, to keep people waiting, even like going to the store. If I see that like a store is going to close in a half hour or 15 minutes, even if I'm close by, I'm like, mm, those people are going to hate me. I've worked in retail. I know what I feel like when I saw like someone come into the store five minutes before closing. I wanted to ram a shopping cart up their assholes. If I really need something and I know I can be quick. I'll usually do this thing where I enter the store apologizing. I'm sorry. I'm only going to be a second. I know what I want. I'm going to run supermarket sweep style. I'm going to fly through that store. I know what aisle the product is in. I will be in and out. I promise. I, you know, I think it's, it all stems from my deep seated need for people to like me, which is ironic because of the awful stuff I say on this podcast. It's very easy for you not to like me. Don't get me started on the Jews, right? Anyway, I've got a clip here of a guy uh, run, trying to enter a store literally one minute before it closes. And he's totally doing this on purpose. I know this is specifically for his YouTube channel or TikTok, whatever. He wants to get a reaction out of store employees and, well, mission accomplished. Yeah, hi. Um, look at my watch here what time it is we're closed we got to do oh. certain things before nine so the lights are going to shut out at 901 it's 859 right now oh so you're saying it doesn't matter what time the thing says yeah, you, you're gonna, gonna you're gonna close you're gonna close before the time actually right uh-huh okay security reasons exactly S security reasons yeah, thank okay you. yeah you're being videoed just to let you know and i'm going to be reporting this reporting this to who the svu the shopper victims unit Oh, I would love to hear that conversation if he actually went to authorities. I'm guessing he means he's going to report this crime to uh, corporate. This is a CVS pharmacy. What I'm baffled by is that this is a one minute and 45 second clip, but we're only 20 seconds in. This dude has been locked out of the store. What could possibly happen next? Please tell me he runs through the glass door. I'm also extremely curious to know what it is he needs to purchase. 
it's it, it's gonna turn out to be like a slim jim or something right yeah yeah you guys close before your time you guys decide you're just gonna close and screw people out of their medication and everything like that that's fine i'm ready recording this could you imagine this guy one minute before the store closed he, go, he has to go get his prescription at the pharmacy i doubt the pharmacy is even open they usually close before the store closes itself it's before nine the store hours are until 9 p.m it is before nine you guys are closing before nine i need to get my medication you guys have decided to close early therefore i cannot get my medication this evening <laughs> close early maybe your watch is a minute behind or something yeah notice they don't care they don't care that somebody can't get their medication Oh my god, is this Norman Wick's son? Because they've decided to close before they're the time that you're supposed they're supposed to be closed. He kinda sounds like Norman Wicks. Or you know, Norman Wicks. And kid. the guy even said it right to my face that he just just decided to close early and screw me and not getting my medication. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this all I'm gonna put y'all on blast. On TikTok, on YouTube. Yeah, he and really thinks he's doing something here. He, he thinks everyone's going to be on his side. Start being famous. You know who's on TikTok? Kids, like teenagers, young adults. They're the ones that typically work at these shitty jobs, right? You're not going to get any sympathy from them. The last clip, wow, just a lot of unhappy people being featured on, <laughs> on today's TV. Somehow it is making me feel better about myself, though. One more uh, group of unhappy people here. We've got a, a woman who has just discovered that her Uber Eats driver is eating all of her food. He's in his car, gobbling some shit down. You didn't do a goddamn thing. I just called you. I just screen recorded the whole thing, too, because I was going to make a complaint. So instead of you bringing me my food or answering the phone, you decided just to keep it and eat it. Give me my food. No. I wouldn't even want it anymore. It's already open, and he's about to take a bite. Yeah, you don't know how much he's manhandled that shit. The one that's open too. I want my drink. I want all that. Oh, sushi. I did try the food. No, you didn't. I, did. I, I, I screen recorded the whole thing, sir. I have it. Me calling you. Me texting you. I screenshot it and screen recorded the whole thing. You was just there. Why didn't you just order your own food? If that's all it was, and you just wanted the food. I know you don't think I was, but I was walking So why didn't you respond to any of the messages? No, I was, I was overwhelmed by messages. I usually get that many. I was trying to... He started to freak out. There were too many messages. I couldn't respond. If you're lost, why didn't you try to contact me so I can help you find it? Yeah, I was just trying to find the place. How was your trying... I'm I mean, just... I, I, it's interesting how he was trying to find where she lived by um, opening her food and sniffing it. And what way were you trying? Me over there. Because I just rode around here. I mean, if he wasn't caught red-handed with the food open, right? I could sort of believe what he's saying because he is in the vicinity. Like he's right near where she lives. It's an incredibly dumb idea to stop and just start eating their food. I mean, they can see where you're at, right, on GPS. I just rode around in circles. I haven't even seen this car, so you were just parked eating my food. You haven't even made it up to King Kids, and you're already sitting here eating my food. So when were you trying to find me? You haven't made it out the complex. And so his thinking was, uh, look, I can't find this lady. I've got all this food in my car. I'm not going to let it go to waste. I'll just eat it myself. I'm right here eating my food. It's not even like you made it anywhere yet. We're still in the complex. He was hungry. Because you pissed me off. Hey, you pissed me off. I'm you just sorry. wasted my time and you pissed me off. And I'm going to send this to fucking Uber Eats. And whoever Don't come between a hungry woman and her food. I can appreciate that. I mean, seriously, if you're going to eat someone else's food, don't do it so close to their house. They'll come looking for you, dumb kid. All right, uh, and with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist to the fucked up news right now. Not a member of the Distorted View Sideshow, what are you waiting for? Help support this stupidity. Become a true and honorable freak today. Superfreaksideshow.com. That's the website to sign up and gain access to the entire archive of programs. More importantly, every week I do brand new Sideshow exclusive episodes. Yesterday was a Sideshow one and uh, tomorrow I'll be doing another. It's a great time to sign up. Memberships are very inexpensive. Only $6.99 a month. Even less when you opt for a quarterly semi-annual 
yearly or lifetime membership. And don't forget, if you happen to use Spotify or Apple Podcasts to listen to DV, you can now sign up for Sideshow Access right in those apps. So you'll get all of the new Sideshow exclusive episodes right along with uh, the free shows in Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Uh, for more information, check out distortedview.com and superfreaksideshow.com. All right, three very quick stories now. First up, all religions are at least a little wacky. We all know this. It's featured time and time again on the podcast. One of my favorite pieces of religious information comes from the Church of Latter-day Saints of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints of Jesus. Some combination of those words. The Mormons. Those kooky, crazy, and yeah, kind of racist Mormons. As a matter of fact, I was just playing uh, that clip from a Mormon cartoon a couple days ago for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. In the cartoon, they explain why black people are black. During the cosmic fight between Jesus and Satan, some people decided not to choose a side. They didn't really want to back anyone. They're like, we're going to sit this one out. We'll just see how this celestial battle plays out. Then we'll decide who to follow. Well, Jesus was pissed at that, apparently, and he cursed all of those people. How did he curse them? He turned their skins black. Dun, dun, dun. It's like the worst thing you could possibly do to a human being. I was thinking, you know, this is just the cartoon version of the story. The narrator says something like, uh, those who didn't take sides in the battle were cursed with black skin. I feel like there's more to it. Now, I don't have any in information. I haven't read up on this at all. But black skin itself isn't a good or bad thing, right? It's just a color. My thinking is that in the texts, it goes into greater detail with some like black stereotypes, like those who didn't choose a side in the battle between Satan and Jesus were cursed with low intellect. The brighter, more holy men will then use these dark skinned savages as property, putting their mule like strength to work, you know, just like crazy stuff like that. Any bad like stereotype you've ever heard uh, against a black person, I bet it's in the, the fucking Mormon books. That's the only way that makes sense. You know, in that cartoon where they're like, cursed with black skin. Well, what does that mean exactly to be cursed with black skin? Oh, I wish that cartoon would have went into more detail. Well, a video of an African-American woman detailing her experiences of racism within the Mormon church has begun to circulate online. The woman, introduced as Channel Ot. Uh, Achenbach? <laughs> Achenbach? I don't know. Was on the Mormon Stories podcast in November last year, though the video was uploaded uh, this year, 2023. In the video, she explained how she was told that she was not permitted to marry a white man uh, as her, quote, seed was cursed. She's got black cursed seed. Mormons uh, seem like they don't have a firm grasp on the concept of procreation, right? Sex baffles them. They use that magic underwear. They're saying women have seeds. No, it's the man who has seed. Women have eggs. You fertilize the egg with the seed. Come on, what's wrong with you? So she was she was told that her seed was cursed. <laughs> cursed. She was also told that she must only marry a black man to prevent her children from also being cursed. Ooga booga. Uh, the episode was uploaded on January 2nd to the Mormon Stories podcast YouTube page, but snippets of her testimony have begun to circulate on other social media platforms such as TikTok. Sure enough, I did a search and I think I found the clip. She says just out of the blue, no prompting. She says, OK, did you know that black people are cursed just like that? And I went, what? Um, someone obviously hasn't seen the cartoon with what? Like like a disease and she's like no 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 listen a greater likelihood of heart disease right i mean there are some things black people are cursed with and she's like no 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 listen. beautiful skin listen. black people are cursed look at me sucking up to black people right now this is what happened so when jesus christ was giving his plan and and um, satan was given his plan you didn't choose either one. You kind of wanted to come down here, get your body and see who would win the war. And then you would choose then. And so you were punished for that. But the good thing is you're here now. You're baptized and now you can prove yourself. So you get your body. You live a good life. Now, remember, it's going to be hard because of your decision. 
your lot in life is going to be really hard. But you chose that. You knew that. You have a veil put over you. You won't remember. So black people really did this to themselves. The whole slavery thing. The centuries of discrimination. You agreed to these punishments. All for not choosing a side. It sucks when you're punished for something your ancestors did, doesn't it, black people? Now you know how us whites feel. Can we please put all of this nastiness behind us? Let's all just start fresh. That's not exactly the uh, the right clip. It's the same woman. Later on, she mentions the thing about the black seed. But you need to find a black man. And I remember kept asking, where am I supposed to find a black man? Yeah, you're not going to find much diversity in Utah. So black people and white people aren't supposed to mix? They're like, no. They're not. And I said, is there a reason why? Yes, because your seed is cursed. If your seed mixes with their seed, then your children, your husband won't be cursed, but your children will be. I don't know if this will make you feel better, lady, but uh, my seed is cursed, too, for different reasons. But still, I feel your pain. Speaking about the story, the woman said uh, two black people. We're just going to stay cursed together. You want me to find a black man so I can be cursed with him. And so our kids can be cursed. Got it. The woman went on to say that she will stop talking uh, about all of this Mormon unpleasantness if the Mormon church agrees to a couple things. First of all, number one, my first demand, uh, you are all going to have to apologize to me and everybody else. That's a demand. Number two, you're going to have to unteach that, meaning actively teach anti-racism. Okay, well, I don't see any of that happening. You can just go ahead and keep going on podcast then. Here's the the problem. Like religion is very reluctant to, to admit to mistakes, especially stuff that happened in ancient times. Because if they if they then start changing things now, it's like, well, what did and didn't happen in this? In your, you know, like that's the whole point of faith is you're just supposed to believe this stuff. If you go changing it, it's like, well, then none of it happened. You're gonna have to say, hey, we are human. We got it wrong. We messed up. We have no problems with interracial marriage. We have no problem with black people. That stuff that's in the pre-existence is wrong. It's not true. It wasn't of God. We made mistakes. Newsweek ran a story uh, about this, uh, and they tried to get a comment from the Mormon church. But uh, so far, they're very quiet. They've taken a vow of silence. Second story we have for you today. Jesus Christ, Amazon Prime, it's like 150 bucks now. And what do you get for that steep price, really? You get free shipping which depending on how much you use Amazon could or could not be worth it. You get Amazon video, which no one really wants. It's like, it's a, you know, you have it. So you watch some of it, but I would gladly pay for, you know, a cheaper price for Amazon prime shipping and just not get the fucking video music. I don't need Twitch plus or whatever the hell they're bundling in there. Uh, the real problem though, is when you buy from Amazon, you expect you're going to get the product you ordered. There is so much scammy shit on that website. Some of it is pretty obvious. I think The Verge ran a story of something that I experienced. I was on Amazon looking for large capacity SSDs. I've got about five terabytes of uh, project files here in Logic. for, for the every, every episode of DV is a new project file. It's typically like a gig or two. And that shit adds up. And I like to keep those project files in case I ever have to go back and edit the show or take out some music or, you know, what, whatever. The hard drive I'm currently using is uh, like a, 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 one of the, like a regular hard drive, a physical hard drive, mechanical. It's slow as shit. And for whatever reason, it goes to sleep a lot. And when I have to load up a file, I literally have to wait 30 to 45 seconds and listen to the spin up of the like. <laughs> I wanted to uh, find a replacement, like an SSD, that's like super fast, no moving parts, blah, 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 blah. Uh, obviously, five terabytes is a, is a large capacity drive for SSDs, which are you know more expensive. I found a 16 terabyte drive. Now, it's a deal if you can find a two terabyte drive for like under $200. I found a 16 terabyte drive, a very, very small looking drive, as a matter of fact. I could just put it on my keychain. <laughs> A 16 terabyte SSD for like a hundred bucks. Me, not being a complete idiot, identified that as a potential scam. So I did not order that drive. Some people did. What uh, people ended up with was like a 16 megabyte flash drive or something. Somehow uh, you can format these drives to make it say that it's 16 terabytes. But then when you try to 
save a large file on it, it just like crashes out. That's not the only scam happening on Amazon. Consumers are being warned now to actually film themselves. Take your take your phone <laughs> and record yourself opening Amazon delivery packages. That way, if you get scammed, there's no question that, uh, you know, you're making this all up. Ian Burton bought uh, the iPhone on December 4th for like 1,400 pounds to replace his daughter's device. But instead, when he opened the package, there was no iPhone in the box. Instead, it was a package of dog food. Still a lot of fun. Looks like it was good quality dog food. Uh, Naturo or something like that. The online retail giant initially refused to refund the money because Mr. Burton had signed for the delivery. Which, you know, you sign for the delivery before you open the package. You just, you get a box and you sign for it. Apparently now you have to uh, unpack the box in front of the delivery person. But they won't even hand you the the box until you sign for it. This makes absolutely no sense. Uh, It has since returned the money after being approached by the BBC's show, You and Yours. Okay. Mr. Burton, 69, nice, told You and Yours he initially thought there had been a simple mistake. But Amazon told him because he had accepted the parcel and given the courier a passcode and the fact that dog food weighed the same as the iPhone, that he must have received the iPhone. That's why they packed in the dog food. They just, these scammers find stuff that weighs the same as the product you're ordering. iPhone weighs X amount of ounces or whatever. They just found a dog food that weighs the same. So it all, you know, kind of makes sense. Uh, Mr. Burton said something within Amazon's security system was obviously wrong if a high value piece of technology could be replaced with dog food. He said that he reported it to the police, but was told Amazon would need to investigate if the switch had occurred at one of its fulfillment centers or if this was all part of a third party scammer. Within minutes of being contacted by you and yours, Mr. Burton received a call from a representative of Amazon who apologized for the situation. So now Amazon will only work with you on refunds if a national news program contacts them on your behalf. Great. Amazon promised they would be conducting a comprehensive review to identify any areas of improvement. The money was refunded to Mr. Burton's account the following day. An Amazon spokesperson told the BBC, we've contacted Mr. Burton directly, apologized and processed a full refund. Tech journalist and consumer champion David McClellan says, "Uh, I'm not saying there's a pattern here, but currently it seems as though whether it's dog food or cornflakes, some people are experiencing problems this way. He recommends that when consumers order high value items from Amazon, they film themselves recording the unboxing of the video. You can just start a new YouTube channel. Might as well. Unboxing videos are very popular, uh, but you should also uh, record looking for any signs of tampering. So now just getting shit from Amazon is a whole fucking production. All right. Finally, today, freaks. This one just happens to come from our most fucked up state. Say it with me. Florida. Our most fucked up state. I've got another religious story for you. It looks like those devout Christians have really done it this time. They've caused such a huge stink. A giant pink dick's going to be rolling into town. What the hell am I talking about? Well, yes, a giant phallus may be coming to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And if that happens, both Jesus and atheists are to thank. A couple of months ago, the city hosted a Christmas tree lighting ceremony as well as a menorah lighting ceremony. Well, that's when the atheists started bitching and moaning. Why can't we set a cock on fire? Dick is my religion. To be honest, I don't know if atheists were truly behind this or homosexuals were behind this. The menorah lighting and Christmas tree lighting were both religious celebrations promoted by government officials, suggesting that the public square was open to anyone who wanted to host a similar event. Enter Chaz Stevens, a real son of a bitch and a local activist known for stirring shit up. He asked the city earlier this month for uh, permission to host an event of his own on April 2nd in honor of uh, Kanemara Matsuri the Shinto Festival of the Street Phallus. Pretty sure we've talked about the uh, Street Phallus Festival in Japan on previous episodes. The centerpiece of that event would be a 300-pound, six-foot-tall pink penis. Now, this news story provides a a picture of a very, like, crude, (laughs) in more ways than one, blueprint of this penis, and uh, it's pretty amazing. Check out the featured image over there at distortedview.com and superfreaksideshow.com. But basically, this penis is not stationary. It moves. 
Well, it doesn't exactly move on its own, but it does things. For instance, at the tip of the dick lies the confetti cannon. When it gets ready to blow, streamer jizz pours out of the thing. According to the blueprints, uh, this is a passive infrared design, or PIR. The PIR is a motion detector that is used in security systems. It's inexpensive and can detect movement of warm body objects from several meters away. An Arduino controller handles the logic and drives the confetti cannon motor. It's 72 inches high, 48 inches wide. The, the balls stretch out, of course, further than the, uh, the shaft in the, the head. The activist also said proceeds from the event would be donated towards AIDS research as well as LGBTQIA awareness. As if anyone is not aware of homosexuals. They're so loud. The city asked him to submit an outdoor event application. The event would still have to be approved by an events committee and the commissioner, but as the South Florida Sun Sentinel notes, a rejection may lead to a religious discrimination lawsuit. Fort Lauderdale may be the first city where this event is taking place, but Stevens is hoping it won't be the last. He's already made similar requests in several other cities. Only one, Deerfield Beach, has rejected him outright, claiming his display would be obscene and create a safety hazard. I smell a lawsuit. City officials there also added that their understanding of the Kanemara Matsuri is that it was more uh, cultural than religious, giving them an out. Stevens told them his attorney would be in touch with them real soon. Several mayors, including Fort Lauderdale's Dean Trantillis, who is openly gay, said they wouldn't support the display. Most conceded this was a legal issue and it wasn't ultimately their call. Because of that, the activist said uh, he would lovingly name the giant phallus Dean. To assist with his future erections, I see what they did there, Stevens has set up a GoFundMe page in order to cover the costs of his $8,000 penis sculptures, along with any potential lawsuits. So the GoFundMe isn't just for the penis itself. The penis is going to cost $8,000. Uh, Chaz here is looking to raise $500,000. So far, $280 has been pledged, so he's got a ways to go. I'm rooting for him, though. I would love to see a penis festival. All right, uh, there you go. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Wednesday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. I love to hear from you freaks, and there are many ways to contact the show. Show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media at distortedview on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook.com slash distortedview show, yada, yada, yada. Let's do a couple real quick calls here. I think we're going to start off with a patron. Hi, Timmy Boo. Hi, freaks. This is Unicorn Hamster checking in. I just wanted to let everybody know that I am completely naked. Oh, great. Laying on my bed. I just got done Red masturbating. Eagle. Uh, oh. I just cleaned myself up, but I've been laying here and uh, enjoying the heat, the hot air, the flow. The heat that comes out of that little mini space heater, it flows right up in my nutsack. I got my, you know. I mean, I realize he's a patron and he has every right to use this uh, phone line, and I and I do say that I will play their calls first. But I, this goes on for another minute and a half. I played forty seconds. Do we need to hear any more about unicorn hamsters masturbation? No, I didn't think so. All right, thank you, unicorn hamster. Well, hey there, Sodomite Tim. This is uh, me, Skeleton, calling oh, up no. with an email for you. Oh. <laughs> I heard you were wanting some more voicemails, so I thought I'd oblige. <sighs> I'm feeling much better after getting the vapors on my last live stream. Satan, along with the Jews and the Negroes, got jealous of my talent, and they... Uh, that must have been... Uh, this call must have came in after Mead's uh, ill-fated live stream. This was a few live streams ago where he had, like, a mental breakdown. <laughs> it was... Probably the greatest moment ever recorded on the internet. My equipment. And earlier that day, I think I saw a suspicious Negro on my street. I mean, I mean, aren't they all suspicious? <laughs> I think I've heard, I've heard enough from. I'm, I have a very short fuse today. I'm like, no more unicorn hamster. No more fake mead. 
while I was playing this guy's uh, email, I thought, oh, my God, maybe Mead has been messaging me again. You know, he does these 1 a.m. email blasts when he's angry with me. And I haven't really been keeping up with that. I haven't checked. But uh, alas, Mead, Mead's been pretty quiet. He's, he's a busy guy. Doesn't have time for me? Come on. Oh, Tim, it's the uh, unstable genius. <laughs> I've been listening to your show every day for many years. So I'll side show member. Let me guess. You have a problem with something I said recently. And I've called you a couple of times somewhat recently. Annoyed? Saying that I have a need for mead. Oh. <laughs> I think what we should do, I think what you should do, for all of the listeners, Sideshow and Freebies, is a little daily mead snippet. And maybe oh, no. have a That's too much mead. Nice long one on Friday for everybody. Because we all just love mead. mead you know, mead uh, posts frequently on that uh, forum, the Apricity, the European Cultural whatever message board. But I think something's uh, wrong with that website because I, I'm looking, like I do a search for mead or I look to see, for, you know, his recent posts and he hasn't posted anything from like mid-December. So either their search isn't working and that's nothing new, by the way. I mean, their, their website is just, it's hanging on by a thread. The website's always going down, crashing. Some pages will just return errors. All it is is a message board. I don't know why they can't uh, keep that going, but whatever. Okay. They got some issues over there. Uh, so yeah, either Mead has been banned and that's why he hasn't been posting or there's something uh, going on with the website. I don't know. Regardless, uh, th that's the reason why lately I've been reading just uh, like posts or messages that he's been posting uh, in his Discord, which is perfectly fine because he feels comfortable. He feels more comfortable in his Discord. And that's where he says the really unhinged shit. If you want to read some excerpts, check out the DV Discord. There's a link on the main navigation bar. Check out the Utardia channel. Freak's doing some good investigative work over there involving Mead. All right, uh, that is all the time we have on this edition of the show. Why don't you guys email me? Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you. 206-666-4463. That's 206 Oh, God, is it? Oh, God. Your seat is cursed. Spread the distortion. STD. Tell all your friends about the show. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or like wherever you can rate and review podcasts. Tomorrow's episode is going to be Sideshow exclusive. If you want to hear it, you got to sign up. Superfreaksideshow.com. Otherwise, I'll see you back uh, one more time for the Friday program. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. This has been another excellent podcast from the Scrod Media Group. Learn more at scrod.net.